Chances are, if you're into the world of health, longevity, all that good stuff, you've heard the buzz about a molecule called NAD+. I mean, it is everywhere, right? It's being hyped as this key to slowing down the aging process. But what is it really? And more importantly, does the science actually live up to all that hype? All right, let's get into it. So here's what we're gonna cover. First, we're gonna break down what NAD plus actually is, you know, why your body needs it so badly. Then we're gonna tackle the big debate. Does it really just disappear as we age? From there, we'll look at how people are trying to boost it, check out the hard evidence from human trials, and finally, we'll ask the big question, is this really aging's silver bullet? Okay, so first things first, what in the world is this molecule that has everyone so excited? Okay, so the long name is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. We're just gonna call it NAD+. Think of it like this. It is the fundamental power source for your cells. It's in every single one of them, and its main gig is to help turn the food you eat into the energy your body actually runs on. It's like the currency of cellular energy. Without it, hundreds of critical chemical reactions would just stop. It's that important. Now, what you're looking at here is the structure of NMN. An NMN is what's called a direct precursor to NAD+. A precursor is just a fancy word for a building block. Your body takes molecules like NMN and uses them to manufacture NAD+. And this is a really key idea, because most of the supplements out there aren't actually NAD+. They're one of these precursors. And its job? Oh, it goes way beyond just making energy. NAD+, is the fuel for your mitochondria. You remember, the powerhouses of your cells. It also powers these special enzymes called PARPs, which are like a tiny microscopic repair crew that's constantly fixing your DNA. And on top of that, it activates sirtuins, which people call longevity genes, because they help regulate the overall health and aging of our cells. So you can start to see why everyone is so focused on this one little molecule. Okay, so if NAD plus is so critical, here's the idea that kicked off this entire anti-aging frenzy the claim that our levels just plummet as we get older. But is that the whole story? This is the number you see everywhere. A 50% drop in your NAD plus levels by the time you hit middle age. I mean, that sounds terrifying, right? This single alarming idea is what's driving the entire market. It's this feeling that our cellular batteries are just draining away and we gotta do something about it and fast. But not so fast. This is where the science gets, well, a lot more complicated. As Dr. Michael Greger points out, saying that NAD plus universally goes down with age is pretty misleading, and that kicks off a huge scientific debate. So here's the deal. The evidence is messy. A big review in 2020 looked at all the studies and found that, yeah, a lot of rodent studies show a decline, but it's all over the place. In muscle, the drop could be anywhere from 10 to 65%. But get this, in the liver, some studies actually found that NAD plus levels went up with age. So the main point here is that the simple story of a predictable decline is just not settled science, not yet. But look, regardless of that debate, the interest in boosting NAD plus is absolutely massive. So how are people trying to do it? Well, it really boils down to two main approaches. You've basically got two paths people are taking. In one corner, you have the supplements, popping pills with those precursors we talked about, like NMN and NR. That's the simple, direct route. In the other corner, you've got lifestyle changes, things you can do to get your body to naturally produce more of its own NAD+. And the cool thing is, the science behind these lifestyle strategies is pretty rock solid. We know that things like exercise and even just eating a little less can activate a pathway that tells your body, hey, make more NAD+. Things like saunas and ice baths create a good kind of stress that also supports production. And eating an anti-inflammatory diet is huge because chronic inflammation unleashes an enzyme that just gobbles up your NAD+. So less inflammation means you get to keep more of the NAD+, you have. But let's be real. Most of the buzz, the money, the excitement, it's all about the supplements. Which brings us to the million dollar question. Do they actually work in humans? First off, you have to understand why the hype exists. In lab animals like mice, the results have been, and I'm not exaggerating, spectacular. Studies have shown these boosters can improve muscle function, fix blood vessels, restore their little mitochondria, and even extend their lifespan. I mean, these are incredible results. The question is, are we just big mice? Well, when we actually look at the data from human trials, the picture gets 
a lot more mixed. For instance, one study found NMM improved how muscles used insulin in pre-diabetic women, which is good, but it didn't actually change their weight or blood sugar. Another one found it improved grip strength and walking speed in older men, but not their muscle mass. And while NMM did seem to help runners aerobic capacity, a really high dose of a different precursor, NR, showed zero improvement in insulin sensitivity for obese men. It's a real mixed bag. And honestly, this quote from a major scientific review kind of hits the nail on the head. It says that for most of the amazing benefits we see in animals, the human data so far is either just not there or it's negative. So, what's the verdict for right now? Well, the good news is the supplements seem to be generally safe. That's huge. But, and this is a big but, the dramatic fountain of youth effects that we see in mice just haven't been clearly repeated in human studies. Instead, the benefits that we do see appear to be much more modest and very specific, like a small improvement in muscle signaling here or a little bit of grip strength there. Not exactly a total reversal of aging. So after digging through all of this, what are the key things you really need to remember? Let's boil it all down. Okay, first, NAD plus is absolutely a vital cellular battery, but the idea that it just vanishes on a predictable schedule as you get older, that's still up for debate in the scientific community. Second, the animal studies are incredibly exciting, no doubt, but the results in humans have been far more modest and all over the map. Third, we already have proven effective ways to support our NAD plus levels naturally, things like exercise, diet, and even using a sauna. And finally, remember this, science is moving super fast. Researchers are already looking into newer and maybe even more powerful precursors. And all of this leaves us with one giant question, doesn't it? Is boosting NAD plus going to become a true pillar of healthy aging, a cornerstone of longevity science? Or is it a really fascinating but ultimately distracting hunt for a magic pill when we should be doubling down on the fundamental health habits we already know for a fact actually work? The science is still unfolding, and for now, only time is gonna tell.